Create with France Sydney. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. This is France Sydney and I help people to overcome their emotional blocks to create the life that they want using mind hacks. And today I would like to talk about one of the aspects that is very pervasive nowadays in our society and is connected to anxiety and that is lack of self-esteem. Do you have self-esteem? Do you like yourself? Do you think you're good? If not, this episode is to help you. So there has been so much research about self-esteem and it's something that we're not born with. You know, when you are a child, you're not very full of self-confidence. You, you will get it later on, not even as a teenager. But when you become a little bit older, you know, 20 to 30, 35, you should really be on top of your self-esteem, knowing your worth and, and feeling amazing. And then it does decline when you get older, which is according to all these studies. And how does that develop? Apparently, there is a 40% genetic component to our global self-esteem and uh, there is also a component which is the environmental factors, where you are born, the culture in your area, where you're a, a boy or a girl, and if you're poor or rich, lots of stuff change, but the rest is really up to lots of things that happen to us. And this self-esteem derives from those beliefs that we build up when we are children regarding the talents that we have in lots and lots of different fields. And so when we start having these early experiences in our life and we say, oh, I'm very good at this, I can, you know, easily connect to people or whatever, this belief that we have will remain with us for a long, long while. And all the beliefs that we build up regarding how we deal with our parents also remain with us for a long while until we challenge them. We have to realize that although we might have a really great self-esteem as 20-year-olds, it could be that after having problems with relationships, with marriage, with work, with health, we might lose our self-esteem and the confidence that we can do something. We might also have problems in understanding that we have a problem. So, you know, our self-worth can increase using therapy and using some very simple mind hacks if if done constantly can help us by restructuring the way that we think. So there are techniques that can help us and it is possible and you can start today. I can start today. You just wanted to do something that is possible, not looking at very difficult stuff, but small, very clear steps. What are the steps? I would say there are at least three things that a person like us can do if we feel that our self-esteem isn't very good. One is to accept who we are. And um, that doesn't mean accept the bad things and the fact that we maybe lack discipline and something, we're not working enough or we're toxic. That's not what I'm talking about. Is understanding that we do have mm, challenges of lots of types and we do have qualities that are, that are positive. And during the challenges, sometimes we have shown strength, so we should accept that we have done something good. And then, so working out what is the way we talk about ourselves is very important in this. So first of all, look at how are we talking to ourselves, and the inner chat, the self-judgmental chat, because the more we judge ourselves and put ourselves down and we call ourselves full, the more we are likely to do that to other people because it's so familiar to us to be incredibly selective in accepting something that is not good enough. So if we always think we're not good enough, we might be judging others that we're not good enough. So careful of this kind of behavioral an attitude that we have of just always putting ourselves down and ignoring all the good stuff that we've done. And we will address a little bit more of that later. The second point, which is based on studies, is to understand that we all have something that we are good at, a strength, um, a good quality of our character. And this can be associated with having a good self-esteem. So what we have to do is not just have this character, this value, but being able to recognize that we have it. Tell ourselves, well, I'm good. I'm a good listener, for example. I'm very tolerant, whatever this thing is. If you then 
notice that you have something and then you use it, use the strength that you have, this will help you to see yourself with a, under a, a much more positive light instead of focusing on what is not going right. So maybe it is time today to look back at your day and pick up something small that you've done that worked out well or somebody thank you or something was successful and say, what did I do then to achieve this good outcome? Say I've done something good. Maybe even write it in your journal because that is so important to remember because sometimes our memories change with time and we forget the good stuff that we've done. Also, there are um, things that can really destroy the self-esteem that we have. Even if it's very big, we can destroy it with four things. And one is to be a perfectionist, right? I do know a person that has lots and lots of migraines all the time and the wife said he has them and he wants everything to be perfect. And one man, you know, it could be that this migraines come because He's always thinking of what could be made even better and better. It has to be absolutely perfect or it's not well. Who knows? The important with perfectionists is that there are mistakes that we all do. And when we look at mistakes, we look at failures. And so perfectionist attitude will drive us to think we are failures. But if we think of not failure, but feedback, then we can think, okay, this is a feedback, what can I do better? So the fact that we are learning, so we are reframing this mistake that allows us to loosen up this perfectionism a little bit and still take something good out of something that didn't go well. Other times the problem with our unhappiness and feel that everything is not going well is because we have very very straight very inflexible values the very the rules that we have the things that we should do the things that we should not do are like rigid and of course there are things that shouldn't change like shouldn't kill shouldn't go and steal from other people okay but sometimes these expectations that we have can make it really, really difficult to cope with life. Because sometimes these expectations only come because of the expectations of other people on us, or our parents, or the culture where we're in, or the job where we're in, or the uh, relationship where we're in, or the, um, the cult, the group, the support group. So we have to be very careful to understand what are the values that we have, what are the roles that we have, and if we are harming our self-esteem by being unable to follow these very, very difficult rules. Another really useful thing is something that came out in a study from McKay and Fanny in 2016. And they say how important it is to allow criticism to mix like water and oil with our self-esteem. Just don't let it in. Because yes, people make mistakes. We all can make mistakes. We can really fall short. But if we are extremely vulnerable to criticism, we have a problem. So the trick, according to the study, is to, to when we handle criticism, is, is to not let it make it forget the self-esteem that we already have. So we have to balance the two things. We already have a self-esteem. The fact that somebody is criticizing us should not destroy us. We should think, is that true? Is it just reflecting the person view of the world, which is not the same map that I have? Could it be that I have something that I actually need to improve? So just take it without the emotion and just react to, to it in a more calm way because we are still good, we still love ourselves. We always have room for improvement, but we don't want to become toxic negative, resentful, or to lose that self-esteem just because somebody doesn't like us, that doesn't mean we're not good. Maybe the fact that they don't like us simply means that they have their own issues. So be very careful how you receive criticism from others. And if you cannot receive any criticism, wow, ask yourself what's going on there. That's also a 
something to look at with curiosity and not with self-judgment. And another point that I think it really is important when we're talking about believing in ourselves that we can do things is when we are not assertive. When we have our needs, have something that we need and we do not ask others for this because we don't believe we're going to get it, because we don't believe we're worth it. And so just imagine how we're going to get the next position in our career or how we're going to get our other half to help us. We can't because we're not assertive. And so we're going to create a circle when we lose up all the time because we need something the other person doesn't know because we will not say it and eventually feel really bad about ourselves because we have not spoken up. So what is actually going on when we think that we are a terrible failure and that we can't do anything right? And sometimes what it is, according to the studies, is that we just have these thoughts and they're going in a loop and they're all cyclical and they're negative and all these thoughts and emotions, they just go round and round and instead of becoming a good positive things for us, they're like a curse because they get enhanced all the time and so we believe that we are that bad and incapable of doing anything because we keep saying it to ourselves. So it's important to understand we have these feelings for a reason and the more we repeat it, the more we will believe it and the more we will feel that in our body. We're going to have this tension, we're going to have areas of our body that are tensed when something happens that requires us to step up. So it's important to really catch the critical voice inside ourselves and say, what's going on here? What are these thoughts saying to me? How did I start believing this stuff? And what is the critic trying to do? Maybe he's trying to save me from failure? Just ask yourself over with curiosity what's going on there. For example, let's say that normally you do not want to mix with other people. You think, well, this is not going to go well. I'm going to be alone. Nobody's going to talk to me. Or oh, I don't want to go to work because nobody treats me well. And maybe this is just your idea, but it's not exactly like that. It's not always like that. It's not every day like that. But that's what you're thinking. And so you are slowly cutting off from society and you're not engaging with others and so these thoughts come into you telling you you can't do this you can't do that that's, that bad thing is gonna happen you have to listen to the thought and say who's talking here and what is the price that i'm paying for me listening because i am listening to this inner critic so think about that and and think what kind of good things am I missing out on because I'm listening to this fearful, self-chattering, critical voice that tells me everything's going to go bad? That's a really good exercise to do. Look at the secondary gain. What are we gaining from not going out, from not meeting the people, from not doing something new and different or difficult? We're gaining this safety. The fear of failure is there. So ask yourself, is it worth it? So every time that this actor comes in into this stage, the theater that is your, your home, your mind, your brain, this actor comes in and you are the producer of this movie. And I want you to think for a minute, well, I don't want the actor saying that I cannot do this and I can't do that and I cannot achieve that job, that relationship, that degree, that success, I cannot because I'm terrible. So when the actor comes out, you as a producer will just tell him to get out and then repeat to yourself, I am a good person, I feel, I love, I, I can survive, I can breathe, I can feel, I can do things. So you just get out of there because I'm not listening to you. And so you have to create a statement that reflects the goodness that you have. And you can use that statement every time that the inner critic comes out and tells you all these lies that you're going to be a failure every time. Because it's not true. It's not going to be every single time. This is a big, gross distortion and generalization of what life is about. So picking up the basis of, of NLP, which are coming from psychology anyway, and back, back to these studies from McKay and Fanning, when you have this sentences coming up in your mind, popping up and telling you that you're not good enough, you can't do this, you can't do that. Always ask you, 
just very quietly say, is it true that I always fail at this? Always. Every single time. Always. Is that true? You never, ever manage to do anything right. Is it actually true? If you went to watch a video of your life, would you actually prove that? What is the evidence that you have on this? And most times you will see that it's not true. You are just generalizing your thinking that because you failed two or three times, you can never try anymore. But it's actually by trying many times that we manage to win and to have success. Most people don't have success because they try once. They try hundreds of times. Think about Edison who invented the light bulb, if I remember. He had hundreds and hundreds of experiments, the explosions, things that didn't work. We're just steps to arrive to the end. The final thing that now we all have is a light in our house. And if he had if he had this way of thinking, oh I'm terrible, he would have done two or three, then would have given up. He would be in the dark. <laughs> think about that. So think think about always what is the evidence that people think that you are so terrible? And you know what? Most times there isn't much of that evidence. And so when you question yourself, in the same way that Socrates did, the ancient philosopher, you will see that many of the statements that we hear in our mind all the time, they're not correct, they're not accurate, they are not describing ourselves in a healthy way and they do not view us as we are viewed by other people. And why would it be important for us to work on our self-esteem? because we need to move on in life and to do things and if we think that we cannot do them because we have low self-esteem we're going to give in and not have so many good experiences because we think we're going to fail so it's understanding ourselves and having that self-esteem is so important and crucial to survive psychologically in our society so although it is true that there are you know parenting and the things that happen in our life, there are genes, all sorts of stuff. Maybe therapy has failed in the past for some reason. But there are so many things that we can do to rebuild this self-understanding, self-compassion. And it really starts with the way that we think about ourselves. It is not to say we have to be arrogant and that we should not work on the things where we need refining. Absolutely, we should have very defined goals, very specific goals and work very slowly on every single part of our personality that we think that we could change. So let, let's get to this, let's prepare this sheet of paper and write down what are the things that we can do better at, but also at the same time what are the things that we are already good at, sometimes they're small things to us, but for others they could be huge, just the capacity of listening to others and not being judgmental and just to um, accept who, who they are with their problems and with their, even with their own self-confidence issues, whatever, that is a skill. So there are so many things we can do and one big thing is to just always question yourself and say, is this true every time? Do I fail every time? How possible is that? And unless you're trying to fly to the moon, you know, with your own body, with nothing there, it is very, very difficult for me to believe that you fail every time. Prove it to me that you fail every time. I want to hear from you that you fail and fail and fail. Because sure enough, we will see that you have had successes, but you're focusing on what you failed in instead of focusing on what you are going well with. It's important to build that self-belief because that's how we then have a courage to go out and help others. Maybe if I ask for a suggestion, we might be able to help them with something, something that they need to finish, a job that is not done, maybe some improvement they need and they're asking, how do I do this? And we say, well, I, can, I can try, I'm not very good, but I can try with this. It's just important that we cannot serve if we think we are rubbish. So think about it in this way. We can all learn something every day. Nobody's perfect. Nobody has 100% perfect self-esteem. And we can all build on it by being a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more realistic, and asking ourselves, what's the next step? Is it to go into this impossible OCD-type goal that are impossible to 
achieve and make us feel deflated. Just focus on something that you can do today. Write down today what are the two things you can do to make your day a good day. And if you find this really difficult, if you think that the inner voice is too strong and you can't shut it down, then that's the way that I'm saying, you know, just that's when you need a therapist. So you can come to me, we can have a, a free chat and see if there is something there that I can do for you. And if not, I'm very happy to refer you. I have some amazing colleagues. But usually I do work with anxiety, self-esteem pretty much every day. So I do know what I'm talking about. And the results are amazing. Once you learn those mind hacks, it's incredible because our mind just wants us to be safe and protected. It doesn't want us to be happy. That's not its job. So if you allow your mind to run the show all the time in a way to protect you from life, you're not going to live any life. You're just going to be there in your shell, maybe uh, medicating yourself with, you know, medications, with drugs, with pornography, with alcohol, with addictions and sugar and emotional eating, but you will not be facing the problem. And one of the big things in facing the problem is to get the self-confidence up again. So if you need any help, let me know. You know you can get an appointment. Just contact me. There are all the links in there all the time. And I wish you a good day. And I hope that you will share this episode with somebody who needs to get help with their self-esteem. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Take care. You've listened to Create with Franz Sidney.